I fell in love with the man who killed my family. Were you or were you not part of the team that bombed that area? I asked, my voice shaking as much as my hand holding the knife over his wound. Denzel's eyes, the same soft green ones I had grown to trust, stared back at me with something I couldn't quite place. Guilt? Maybe? Or fear? His lips parted, but no words came out. Just shallow breaths. I held the knife closer to the very stitches I had carefully sewn into his skin just days before. I need the truth, I whispered. Tell me the truth. Despite my show of courage, my heart was pleading with him to deny it. It was already wrong enough of me to save my enemy. Please, please don't make me the one who fell for the man who killed my family. Flashback. About ten days ago. Help me. Please, he whispered, his voice barely audible. As a nurse, my eyes should have first scanned for his wounds, but all I saw in that moment was his clothes. His uniform. The deep green and gold insignia stitched onto his chest, marking him as one of them the enemy. He collapsed to his knees at the entrance, gasping for air, his eyes locking onto mine. Help me, please. My heart raced, thudding in my ears. This man, this soldier, was from the other side. He was the enemy. Everything I had been taught, everything I had seen, screamed at me to shout, call for help, have him captured and killed if possible, but for some reason I couldn't. What the hell are you doing here? I demanded, not moving from my spot. I clenched my fists, nails biting into my palms as I tried to keep myself from losing control. The man struggled to breathe, his hands slipping from his wounds as he tried to speak. I... I need help. Help? I repeated incredulously. My voice rose, even though for some reason the last thing I wanted was to attract attention. You walk into my camp wearing that and want me to help you? He winced, his face pale and slick with sweat. I had no choice. I didn't... I didn't know. Please save me. I could see the blood pooling around his knees now, staining the dirt beneath him, mixing with the grime and sweat. He was dying. I could see that. I'd seen it enough times to know, but still, I couldn't move. All I could focus on was that damn uniform. I should let you bleed out right here, I muttered, more to myself than to him. Why should I save someone like you, after what you people have done? His eyes flickered, a hint of desperation breaking through the pain. I... I didn't. I'm not... He coughed, blood dribbling from the corner of his mouth. For a moment, I just stood there, frozen, torn between every instinct screaming at me to walk away and the part of me that had taken an oath to save lives. Any life. But his life? I can't, I whispered, shaking my head again, as if I could shake away the guilt already gnawing at my insides. You don't understand. People I care about, they're dead because of you. Because of your side. I'm sorry, he breathed, his voice weaker now, almost lost in the quiet of the tent. I'm sorry for what happened to you, I swear. I stared at him, the enemy, bleeding out right in front of me. His apology hung in the air, and I didn't know what to do with it. I could turn you in, I said, taking a step closer, though I didn't know why. You know what my side would do to you, right? He didn't answer. His eyes fluttered shut, and he slumped forward, barely holding on to consciousness. His words were barely there as he whispered, Please. I stared down at him, my mind screaming at me to walk away, but my body wouldn't listen. His uniform, that damn uniform, told me everything I needed to know about who he was, what he represented. He wasn't just any man. He was the enemy. But now he was dying. Right here. And all I had to do was walk away and let nature take its course. It'd be justice, wouldn't it? For everything they'd done to us. For everything I'd lost. Except, except I was a nurse. A healer. I'd sworn an oath to save lives, any life, no matter who. I was supposed to be better than this, and here I was standing over a man debating whether or not I should let him die. I knelt down beside him, almost without thinking. My hands moved automatically, pressing down on the wound to slow the bleeding, checking his pulse. It was weak. He was going to die if I didn't do something now. I swore under my breath, reaching for my medical bag. Damn it, I muttered, pulling out supplies as fast as I could. I should let you die here. I really should, but I can't. My hand worked quickly, stitching him up, stabilizing him the best I could. The anger still simmered beneath the surface, but it was quieter now. Quieter, because somewhere deep inside, I knew I couldn't just let him die. The next day, I knelt beside the cot, staring down at the unconscious man. His breathing was steady now, a small sign that my work hadn't been for nothing. But the longer I sat there, the more anger, the confusion, the exhaustion all settled in my chest. I glanced at the wound. His stitches had held, but the bandages were soaked through. Guess it's time for another round, I muttered, more to myself than to him. 
I wasn't sure if I wanted him to wake up or stay out long enough for me to figure out what the hell I was doing. As I pulled away the old dressing, I couldn't help but notice the solid muscle underneath. He was built like a soldier, strong, lean, every inch of him conditioned for combat. It felt wrong to admire it, but I couldn't deny the fact that he was, well, impressive. Not what I imagined from the enemy. I'd always imagined them as some faceless force, brutal and merciless, like monsters from the other side, but here he was, just a man, flesh and blood, no different from the soldiers I patched up every day, and that made it even harder to wrap my head around. He groaned softly, shifting in his sleep, but didn't wake. I kept working, my hands moving on autopilot as my mind wandered. Why was there even a war? The thought hit me hard. What were we fighting for? Denzel, his name came to me, looked just like the rest of us. He bled and hurt the same. It felt so pointless. I leaned back, feeling the weight of it all. They're just like us, I whispered. Watching him vulnerable made it hard to ignore. I finished changing his bandage, wondering what he dreamed about. Did he want this war? None of us did, yet here we were, caught in something beyond our control. When he woke up, would he see me as an enemy or just another man? There was no way of knowing. For now, he was just Denzel, and I was just a nurse. About three days later, I walked into the tent, the midday sun streaming in through the gaps in the canvas. It had been a few days since I'd found him and patched him up. He was still unconscious for the most part, which made tending to him a lot easier. Today was no different. I came in with a bowl of water, a rag slung over my shoulder, and the usual set of supplies. Time for a cleanup. All right, let's get this over with, I muttered, dipping the rag into the water and wringing it out. As I reached over to wipe the grime off his chest, he stirred. I froze, watching as his eyes flickered open. He blinked a few times groggy, but clearly more awake than he had been before. His voice was hoarse as he asked, What? What are you doing? I raised an eyebrow, not stopping. Keeping you from stinking up my tent, I said casually, wiping the rag across his chest. You're not exactly in a condition to take care of yourself right now. He groaned, trying to shift, but winced as the movement pulled at his wounds. I pulled the rag away and started working on his side where the stitches were. As soon as the water touched the wound, he sucked in a sharp breath, his hand twitching like he was going to stop me. Hold still, I said, trying to keep the irritation out of my voice. Hurts, he muttered, biting back another groan as I continued cleaning. I rolled my eyes. Oh, come on. How are you even a soldier if you can't handle a little pain? This is nothing compared to what you went through out there. He clenched his jaw, eyes narrowing. It's not like I wanted to be a soldier. That caught me off guard. I paused, looking at him. What do you mean? You didn't want this? His gaze shifted to the ceiling, and for a moment, I wasn't sure if he was going to answer, but then he sighed, his voice soft. Back where I'm from, there isn't much. People barely have enough to eat. The war. It's destroyed everything, but it keeps going, and with fewer soldiers, they needed bodies. Healthy young men. I frowned, my hand stopped mid-wipe. So they just took you? He nodded, his face tense as he remembered. Yeah. From all the nearby villages, they came to my village, lined us up, and picked out every man they thought could fight. It wasn't a choice. It was either join the army or watch your family starve. I let out a slow breath, trying to process what he was saying. You didn't want to be here. He shook his head. I never wanted to be a soldier. I didn't care about the war or the sides. I just wanted to keep my family safe. I figured if I went, at least they'd be left alone, but they still had nothing. Even with me gone, they barely had enough to survive. My hand stopped working. I sat there, rag in hand, just staring at him. This was the enemy, right? The same people I had hated, blamed for everything. But hearing him talk like this, it sounded familiar, like something I'd heard from the soldiers on my side. They didn't want this either. They were just surviving, same as us. I'm sorry, I found myself saying before I could stop the words. I didn't know. He didn't look at me, just closed his eyes again. None of us do, he whispered. We're just doing what we have to. I finished cleaning his wound in silence, the weight of his words hanging heavy in the air between us. There was no clear line anymore, no black and white, no good and evil, just people like him, like me, trying to survive a war none of us had chosen. As I wrapped the fresh bandage around his side, I couldn't shake the thought from my head. What are we even fighting for? About two days later, Denzel was sitting up now, propped against a stack of blankets. It had taken him days to get to this point, but he was finally fine enough to sit and manage on his own. Mostly. I watched as he brought the bowl of stew to his mouth, eating slowly but with clear hunger. He was starving, and I'd been giving him whatever I could spare. 
It wasn't much, but he needed it more than I did. Thanks, he muttered between bites, his voice still gravely but steadier now. He wasn't one for many words, but his eyes said enough. He was grateful. No problem, I said casually, leaning back against the tense wall, crossing my arms over my chest. It was kind of weird watching the enemy eat the same rations I was barely surviving on, but here we were. The silence was comfortable until my stomach, out of nowhere, let out a loud and very obvious growl. I cringed, shifting a bit in embarrassment as Denzel paused mid-bite, raising an eyebrow. Have you not eaten? He asked, his voice carrying a mix of concern and curiosity. I waved it off quickly. It's not like they're serving food for enemies out there. I can't exactly waltz into the mess hall and say, Hey, got some stew for the guy in my tent? I laughed awkwardly, trying to make light of it. But he wasn't laughing. Denzel lowered the spoon, his eyes narrowing as he looked at me. Wait, you haven't been eating at all? You've been giving all your portions to me? I could feel my face heating up. Sharing, I corrected, scratching the back of my neck. Sharing would be the right word. I avoided his eyes, suddenly feeling exposed. You needed it more anyway. You were the one on the brink of death, not me. He stared at me, his mouth slightly open, like he was trying to process what I'd just said. Why? I blinked at him, not sure how to answer. Why what? Why give me your food? I'm the enemy, right? You said it yourself. You didn't have to. I'm a nurse, I interrupted, feeling the weight of his question. It's what I do. I save people. I keep them alive. Even if they're not on my side. He was quiet for a moment, his eyes softening. You've done more than that. You've kept me alive, even when you didn't have to. I swallowed, shifting uncomfortably. Look, it's not a big deal. You're alive, aren't you? Just finish the stew. Denzel looked down at the bowl, then back up at me, and pushed it toward me. Here, you need it more than I do right now. I stared at the bowl for a second, feeling the pang of hunger gnawing at me. My stomach let out another traitorous grumble, and I let out a sigh. All right, fine, but only because you insisted. I took the bowl from him, and as I lifted the spoon to my mouth, he leaned back and closed his eyes with a satisfied look on his face. I'm serious, he said quietly. You've done more for me than anyone ever has. Yeah, well, I muttered, taking a bite. Don't get used to it. Three days later. I was sitting across from Denzel as he bandaged a wound on his arm. He'd been doing most of the work himself since he'd regained his strength. I watched him, captivated by the way his hands moved with purpose and care, the way his sharp features were illuminated by the fading light. Need some help with that, I offered, breaking the comfortable silence. He shook his head, a small smile playing on his lips. I got it. Just a little awkward, that's all. His eyes flicked to mine, and for a moment, I felt a spark. Something warm and unfamiliar. You're getting better, I said, trying to focus on the practical. Soon you'll be back on your feet completely. Denzel paused, his expression turning serious. Yeah, soon. He didn't sound happy about it. The weight of his words hung in the air, and suddenly I felt a knot tightening in my stomach. Soon. He'd be leaving, going back to his side of the war, back to being my enemy. My mind raced, battling with the feelings that were starting to surface. What was I even thinking? He was still the enemy. He would go back to his side again soon. Nothing could happen between us, nothing at all, but there was a part of me that didn't want to let that go. I was drawn to him in a way that scared me. Ethan, his voice pulled me from my thoughts. Yeah, I said, forcing a casual tone. Why do you keep looking at me like that? His gaze was steady, almost probing, and it sent my heart racing. I shrugged, trying to play it off. Just wondering how a guy like you got stuck in this situation, I guess. Tell me, what did you used to do when you were, you know, not a soldier? I needed to keep the conversation on safe ground. I needed to be careful. He smiled a genuine smile, a beautiful one. I was a farmer by day and a florist by the evening, he said proudly. A farmer? Huh, that explains the body, I thought. Sounds lovely, I smiled back. What about you? Did you always want to be a nurse, he asked. Well, yeah, my mother was one and I used to watch her as a kid. Maybe I picked it up from her. It was her who taught me to help others and always follow my heart. I replied, wondering if Mom would have approved of me saving the enemy, caring, understanding, falling for the enemy. Ethan, he leaned closer, and my breath hitched. What are you thinking? I swallowed hard, forcing a smile that didn't reach my eyes. Nothing important, but it was everything, and that was the problem. The next morning. The sun had barely risen when I was jolted awake by a commotion outside the tent. I rubbed my eyes, trying to shake off the sleep, but the shouting and hurried footsteps grew louder. 
I stumbled out into the chaos, blinking at the bright morning light. Soldiers were gathered in groups, pointing and talking animately. My heart sank when I caught snippets of their conversations. One of those bombed the village? One soldier asked, his face pale with disbelief, right before they called back the siege. A chill ran down my spine. My thoughts raced back to the last village. My village. The one I lost my family in just eleven days ago. The same heartless operation that had taken everything from me. What are they saying? I asked a fellow nurse who was nearby, worry etched on my face. He shook his head, still staring at the group of soldiers. Rumor has it one of their guys slipped through our defenses. They think he's in the area. Slipped through? I echoed, confusion mixing with dread in my stomach. What do you mean? As far as I knew, wasn't Denzel an enemy soldier who slipped into our area? How many of them have slipped in here? Someone from the enemy's side. They're saying he might have even broken into our camp, he said, glancing around nervously. They're distributing hand-drawn posters of him all over the place. I felt my heart race. I moved closer to the cluster of soldiers, straining to hear more. Anyone who sees him has to alert the sergeants immediately, one of the sergeants shouted, holding up a tattered poster. If he's captured, we can get valuable information, maybe even find out their future plans. To my horror, the poster showed Denzel's face. I clenched my fist, feeling sick. I had saved a monster, one of the men responsible for my family's death. I nursed him back to health shared food with him, and even let myself care about him. Betrayal screamed in my mind as anger washed over me. How could I have been so naive? I felt disgusted with myself for caring for someone who caused me so much pain. Ethan, a voice broke through my thoughts. I shook my head trying to clear my mind. My heart raced with fury and heartbreak. Denzel wasn't just an enemy. He was the enemy. I had to confront him. I wanted to scream, to unleash all the rage I felt since I lost everything. How could I have been so blind? I was furious and heartbroken, and I would make sure he faced the consequences of his actions. About half an hour later, Were you or were you not part of the team that bombed that area? I asked, my voice shaking as much as my hand holding the knife over his wound. Flashback end. He didn't look at me, as he couldn't bear to see me eye to eye. His lips parted, but no words came out, just shallow breaths. I need the truth, I whispered. Tell me the truth. I... Ethan, he started, his voice shaken. Yes or no, Denzel, I asked firmly, my patience running thin. Yes, he whispered in a tiny voice. Something took over me at that moment. All I wanted to do was kill him, stab him right in the heart, and end the man I had saved despite all the risks. The man was clearly my enemy from the beginning. The man who, as much as I hated in the moment, I had grown to care for. But I couldn't. I threw the knife away and got far away from him as the knife hit the floor with a loud clang. Ethan, don't, I interrupted, my anger flaring. Just don't. You don't get to say my name like that. Not after everything. Denzel's eyes widened, and I saw the hurt there. I'm not the monster you think I am. Not the monster? I spat, my heart pounding with rage and betrayal. You're part of the team that destroyed my life. You're the enemy. I didn't choose this, he exclaimed, desperation creeping into his tone. None of us did. I shook my head, the weight of my anger feeling heavy in my chest. But you still did. You still hurt people, Denzel. My family! My voice broke, and I squeezed my eyes shut, fighting the tears threatening to spill over. They were the ones who died in that bombing, Denzel. You killed my family. Ethan, please, stop. Just stop, I shouted, stepping back. I can't. I can't do this anymore. I took a deep breath, trying to calm the storm inside me. Just go. Just leave. I want you gone by sundown. If you're still here after that, I swear I'll hand you over. I will, and you better than anyone know what they'll do to you. Denzel looked at me, shock painting his features. Ethan, don't. I mean it. I cut him off again. Ethan, please. I need you to understand. Leave, I shouted one last time, my voice breaking. I don't want to see you again. Just, just go. The next evening... The sun was rising as I approached the village, memories flooding back with every step. The battalion was ordered to return to the headquarters, but I didn't want to go back. Instead, I felt drawn to see where my family had lived and lost their lives. As I walked past the ruins, my heart ached at the sight of our charred home. I hesitated, overwhelmed by memories. I could almost hear their laughter. Kneeling in the ashes, tears streamed down my face. I'm so sorry, I whispered, my voice breaking. Then an old man appeared, leaning on a cane. You're lucky to be alive, young man, he said gently, filled with understanding. I looked up surprised. I... I don't feel lucky. Not after what happened. 
He approached slowly, taking a seat beside me in the rubble. No one does. This war, it takes everything from us. Do you think they died in pain? I asked, my heart aching at the thought. The old man sighed, staring into the distance. Maybe, but not as much as the enemy, I'd wager. I frowned, confused. What do you mean? He turned to me, his eyes sharp with knowledge. The team that bombed this village, they came with their malicious intent, but when they arrived, they didn't have a chance to do what they were sent to do. Our side caught up to them first, and when they realized they were outnumbered, they retreated. The enemy side was backed into a corner. So they didn't even get to finish the job? I asked, feeling the flicker of hope. Our side tried to bomb them, but something happened and it backfired, causing all this, he sighed, looking at the destruction around him. To minimize their loss, they retreated too, but one did not. One soldier tried to save the people, and the most shocking part was he was not even from our side. I stared at him, my heart racing. Who was he? The old man looked me in the eye. They say he was brave. He paid heavily for it, barely made it out alive. I felt a knot form in my stomach. I pulled out the hand-drawn poster of Denzel from my pocket. Is this him? The old man nodded, his gaze falling to the ground. He tried to save us, but now... how oh, he's been painted the villain. It's how the world works, young man. I didn't know what to think anymore. He was not the monster I thought he was. I thought staring at the face of the man I had saved. Later that night, after learning the truth about the bombing... I felt a pull to the border, an urgent need to find Denzel. I had to talk to him to let him know that I knew his truth. He had once mentioned the secret passage, a deep cave in the forest where he had come from before. If he was leaving as I had asked him to, it would be from there. As I made my way through the dense trees, anxiety twisted in my stomach. The forest was eerily quiet, my heart thumping loudly in my chest. What if I was too late? When I finally reached the cave, my breath caught in my throat. There, halfway inside, was Denzel, unconscious and bleeding heavily. My heart raced as I rushed to his side. Denzel! I shouted, panic surging through me. He lay there, barely alive. I could barely feel a pulse beneath my fingers. No, 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 please don't do this to me, I whimpered, feeling a wave of fear crash over me. I couldn't lose him. He was the only good thing in this chaotic, cruel world. I rummaged through my backpack, grabbing the supplies I had on hand. Come on, Denzel, I whispered, trying to stay calm. I can't lose you. I worked quickly, cleaning his wounds and stitching him up as best as I could. You're tougher than this, I murmured, my hands shaking as I injected him with what I had. Just hold on. Forty minutes passed like a lifetime. I felt like I was fighting against time itself. Finally, as I was finishing up, I noticed a slight movement. Denzel stirred, his eyelids fluttering open. Ethan, he croaked, confusion clouding his eyes. Thank God, I breathed, wrapping my arms around him tightly. You scared me half to death. He looked startled, but then his expression softened. What are you doing here? I came to find you, I said, my voice muffled against his shoulder. I know the truth, Denzel. I'm so sorry for everything. Denzel's hand came up to wipe the tears from my cheeks. You silly, he said, his voice still hoarse. You shouldn't have come. Do you have any idea how much risk you put yourself in for me? I don't care, I replied, pulling back to look him in the eyes. I love you. We're supposed to be enemies, and I shouldn't hate you, but I don't. I love you, Tinsel. The tears flowed freely now, and I felt raw and exposed. His expression shifted, and he smiled gently, wiping away my tears with his thumb. I love you too, silly. My heart and my life belong to you from the moment you saved my life. I couldn't hold back anymore. I leaned in, capturing his lips with mine. It was soft and desperate, filled with all the emotions I had kept bottled up for so long. I poured everything into that kiss. My fear, my anger, my love. When we finally pulled apart, I rested my forehead against his, breathing heavily. I thought I'd lost you, I confessed, my voice trembling. You'll never lose me, Denzel promised, his eyes steady and sincere. Not again, I swear it. Good, I said, wiping my eyes and feeling a sense of calm wash over me. Because I can't imagine my life without you. Denzel grinned, his earlier pain momentarily forgotten. Let's get out of here. Then, I'd rather face the world with you than lie here in the dark. Deal, I said, helping him sit up slowly. But we need to be careful. I don't want to put you in danger again. He nodded, his expression serious now. We'll take it one step at a time. Together. As we began to make our way out, my heart felt lighter. 
I had faced the truth, and despite the chaos that surrounded us, I had found Denzel. Love had a funny way of surviving even in the darkest of times. Conclusion After we left the cave, Denzel and I fled to a neutral country, finally escaping the madness of war. It wasn't easy, especially considering he was a soldier, but we somehow managed to. Soon, we found a cozy little village and settled down, starting fresh. I got a job at a local clinic and Denzel opened a flower shop. Every day felt like a new adventure and our love just kept growing. It was nice to focus on the good stuff instead of the chaos behind us. Holding his hand, I felt excited about the future. We had a chance to build a life together and I knew we'd tackle whatever came our way together. The End Would you ever leave people for love? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force. And stay wholesome.